Yes, started. So we have with us, yeah, um, everyone is getting ready for the evening. It's yes, a very uh, different topic. Uh, Dr. Anuj, you have uh, our Dr. Debangshu, those who are on the screen. If you're coming on the screen, then only you are eligible for the e-certificate. Otherwise, you are just passive listeners. Okay, it's your choice. Um, the fact here is, every one of you, how many of you are doing tele-rehabilitation? Are you in the lockdown? You have treated patients via the phone. Can you answer in the chat? Yes or no? Yes means... You have treated patients online via a chat, either from a laptop or from the phone. Tele rehabilitation. We have 18 participants, so you can. And Dr. Debangshu, can you give your experience of what you know so far about chiropractic? What is your opinion about whether it started from where and how it is? The present no, scenario. Sir. Take maximum five minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, no, uh, no, sir. No means mm, only see the YouTube video, chariopathic and osteopathic. But yeah. But you also uh, I do not practice any. Any other training programs on chiropractic which you completed? No, no, sir. No. Any other um, related programs which you completed? No, uh, osteopathy and chariopatric, I only saw YouTube video, but no um, uh, participant any program or, uh, or workshop or any other. But it is very interesting. It is very interesting. Yes. So but, what... Uh, but I saw on YouTube video that uh, only man, a same protocol is used if every patient. Ah, you have watched many videos in YouTube and you saw they are using the same yeah, protocol, okay. like the full body. Yeah, first, first leg, leg length measurement and then uh, full body act. So it, uh, it is not correct I, in my thought. All patients, same treatment by observing leg length distribution and same procedure for from say uh, from neck to uh, uh, hip, hip joint pulling. Act. And most same of those way. videos are... Uh, uh, performed by Indians? Hi, Indians. Okay. Yes, you, have sir. you watched the Western uh, practitioners doing chiropractic techniques? The YouTube videos? Uh, many, many of them uh, uh, Indians. Indians, yeah. Okay. So we had the first observation that there are lots of videos, tons of videos in YouTube on chiropractic. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And uh, sometimes you will get to these chiropractic videos in Instagram Reels or Facebook Shorts. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, you see that most of them are doing the lumbar spine manipulation. Hmm. Uh, most of the time, the side lying, the rotation thrust, hmm. or the cervical, upper cervical rotation manipulation, which they are doing. And you will also find that there's a loud cracking or popping sound that yes. comes during the administration of the technique. Uh, some of the videos, if you really watch closely, they have kept the microphones on the patient. They kept the microphone in the collar or in the T-shirt. okay, Or it is in the wrist of the therapist. The practitioner wears the wrist band with the microphone. So that when they do the thrust, they want to listen to that popping sound to be magnified or uh, amplified so that the video looks more credible that the cracking or popping sound is the focus of that video. Okay. If you actually see all those videos, people would have watched okay, YouTube videos on chiropractic, including Dr. Dashna, 
uh, who's our general secretary of the AOMPT. Um, but you will see, if I'm wrong, please feel to correct me. You can all unmute it, okay? Anytime you can want to unmute and you can talk, okay? And in all these videos, you see that they tell some terminologies like opening the muzzle knots, releasing the deepest bones, okay? Cracking open her locked muscles or joints, okay? So this kind of terminology will be there. And uh, you will feel that this terminology is like, uh, you know, what is that? What does that exactly means? Okay, you don't know. And uh, when you observe the techniques, the microphone is there in the wrist. A therapist speaks to the patient. <clears throat> they keep telling that you have an alignment problem there. I'm going to correct it. Okay. So in the shoulder. Uh, so, and that's why it is paining. Okay. Your rib also is out of place, so I'm going to fix it. Okay, so they'll be using some communication. And uh, but what happens is, as Dr. Debangshu was highlighting, is right side shoulder, shoulder pain. The patient comes. They treat right side ribs, and they also go to the left side ribs also. And they use the same technique. Okay, the rib thrust, if they are giving, means the same technique is used on other side also. Uh, they, they ask the patient, like, for example, do you have any knee pain in the past? Okay. Yeah. yeah. The patient has come with a frozen shoulder. They ask the patient that, do you have a knee pain in the past? And the patient tells, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had left knee pain. Then they say, left to right, there is a diagonal connection. So, your right shoulder is affected. So, they will give the adjustment to the left knee. And after which, they will treat the right knee also. And they will tell, I am restoring the balance between left and the right. Because if I give chiropractic adjustment only to the left, the uh, right will not be balanced. So, I have to give the treatment to the other side also. But technique is actually the same administered both the sides. About Indian, the videos, you see that the views are like lakhs and crores. General public is watching these YouTube videos. And most of the times the patients are lying down, videos are taken, invading their privacy. We always believe that patient comes to you for treatment, not for marketing. But unfortunately, these videos are taken in angles and uh, views to promote their own clientele. They don't even blind the patient's face. It should be dull and it should be masked, okay, the digitally at least. But nothing they do. And <clears throat> the next thing what you see is the description. The therapists do not give a scientific description for ourselves, for professionals who are watching the video. It's only for the patients and the common public whom you tell that you have got a muscle knot. Okay, here there's a muscle knot. I'm going to open it. Okay, I'm going to uh, crack it open. Okay. Uh, but absolutely, you see all the videos, the patients are happy. They are dramatically uh, enjoying that experience of receiving the treatment. But what I want to ask you all is, is any one video which is live streaming or is it edited? Edited and uploaded versus live streaming video so that you can be clear about the authenticity directly in a real scenario when we are approaching somebody, patient is coming, we evaluate and we treat. There's a big difference compared to an edited video where some of the times you will see it's given, the cracking is given for the neck, patient tells, no, still pain is there like that. They will try to show 
but that time it will be cut and go to the next clip because they can easily edit and remove the responses of the patients where they are not improving and most of the channels which are sharing this for example crack addicts okay there's a channel i will uh, today take you through a journey where you are aware of what is the fact okay <clears throat> yeah so we are now ready i'll share the screen and take you further okay dashna can inform me if the screen or the uh, streaming is not clear okay yes sir sure but anyway youtube i'm not going to play the video i'm just going to run through you know what all content is available uh, so that people are aware okay start the screen go to youtube this is the channel crack addicts and you can see the first woman getting treatment dashna can you see it is moving it's playing yes sir it's playing okay. uh you can see how these uh, recordings are done okay it's not about the chiropractor who is doing this but it's also about uh, the way they project the patients for marketing okay literally treating them like um, i do not know what to say okay just run through this channel alone crack addicts where some of the videos even have crores of views okay Five crores, like that, uh, big big number of views. Okay, they sometimes might look attractive for young boys, because most of the patients are women. Okay, and uh, you can see the hand placements, uh, the techniques how they are performed. Um, here the face is covered. Okay, I think she is culturally uh, very conscious. might be from rajasthan if i am right so that's the story here so this is very attractive oh this is a different technique here okay so yes here you see that uh, the person is doing the thrust for the cervical also after lumbar first you saw the hammer uh, therapy um of course don't look at the bottom video okay so the top one i was talking about okay and he is also using electronic devices okay so there are a lot of methods that come under this so i'll go back to the zoom right so if anyone is unmuting please be on the screen don't just be unmuting and having background noise okay so i want to bring your attention to this kind of scenario where uh, you think it's an advanced technique uh, but what is advanced really in that is the video editing that is the advanced procedure and the next thing how many of you have done any courses on chiropractic can you put in the chat have you completed doctor of chiropractic the highest course or the next level masters the msc advanced chiropractic i don't think there is any diploma level courses on chiropractic okay so it's a masters diploma in chiropractic that is the ackerman institute uh, from sweden uh, so what are the responses in the chat how many of you have got any kind of a formal chiropractic yeah darshana has put not done any course are you when i was asking dr debanshu i asked him like have you done any other course that is related to the chiropractic okay yes we are getting responses that no no okay first time in chiropractic session here dr anuj Dr. Shahid also no. Okay. 
I really appreciate all that no, whoever answered no, because you are attending this session because it is AOMPT. You are not attending because it is chiropractic. Okay? If you wanted to attend because it is chiropractic, you would have got many webinars before. And even if you have not done them, it means that you are not attracted to chiropractic. You wanted to know about chiropractic and you are attracted to the academy. That makes me feel really worthwhile in taking this session. And I want to also open your insights into, but I have seen one of the clinician do live at a clinic. Okay. Johar Naina. Maina. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that live experience you should share. What did you observe? Oh, no. hey, Johar Maina, one minute. I'll unmute you. You can unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think there's a volume. <laughs> can you can you remove the microphone just directly talk from the phone uh, device? Uh, hello. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've recently attended a clinic to do well. So one of my sir, he pra he's practicing Cairo actually. He's doing his master. Recently he went to Chennai to do it. I mean the I think the course. So I've seen him treat the patients, you know, live, like is it may be LBA case or you know, patella manipulations. He says it Cairo, but I'm really confused what are manipulations and the difference between my manipulations and Cairo. But still, he confuses me every time saying that almost they are same, but still they're in, in, unique in the way they practice. So, can I can I pick up that unique feature? For example, osteopaths also do manipulation. Chiropractors also do manipulation. Mm -hmm. And both of them have that similarity of looking at the leg length. Yeah. The yes. prone and leg length assessment, which a physical therapist never does. Okay? okay. And physical therapy evaluation, more lengthy, more time consuming. Okay? And physical therapist rarely uses a thrust manipulation. Mm -hmm. Although the thrust manipulation is inside the Maitland vertebral manipulation textbook itself, okay? Yeah. Because it's the grade 5 of mobilization is the manipulation. Okay. But physical therapists don't use the manipulation at all that commonly, okay? Oh. And they use it also, they use it after a lengthy procedure. So, oh. and uh, these osteopaths and chiropractors, they do this manipulation as the first treatment technique. Yeah. So Very that's Electrotherapy, even electrotherapy rarely the sir uses. In three, four sessions, I think the patient also says they're very relieved of their symptoms. Okay. So it is really good if the patient is directly getting relieved. Okay. So by whatever method, if the patient gets better, we have to appreciate. Yeah. But the hidden fact is, is there anything happening in their body even if the symptom is not there. See, for example, uh, the symptom comes. Okay, so the symptom can be treated. But are we treating the actual problem that is inside? Okay, so that is the one. What they say in the problem is, according to chiropractors, wherever the problem, first the spine is important. They always tell there is a spine subluxation. Okay, so something like this. And it's a structural malalignment in the spine. So that means you palpate both the sides and then you find an asymmetry. Transverse process are not in line. Uh, so the vertebra rotated. Okay. And it is causing a nerve root irritation or the attached muscles are getting dysfunctional or the there are various relationships from the spine to the extremity where autonomic nervous system and also um, the regional interdependence, all the muscles of the extremity are connected to the spine. If you see the capillary muscles attached to the spine, lattice muscles are say, upper limb is attached to the lumbar spine. 
so you can give thrust manipulation to lumbar even in a patient who has an impingement shoulder of impingement syndrome of the shoulder uh, because impingement syndrome happens because of internal rotation of the arm more foot nahi the and that internal rotation of the arm can be due to a overactive latissimus dorsi okay and that latissimus dorsi can be influenced through lumbar or coracolumbar rotation thrust manipulations so you can uh, always think of various uh, relationships how a particular treatment can be effective but there are two mechanisms that actually plays a larger part in any patient having a pain relief when we were children our mother will touch us we will feel the relief of the pain okay i hope all of you would have experienced this as a child if you have a stomach pain the mother comes and touches with the hand your pain will disappear it's not a therapy not touch therapy it is the the psychological component the emotional connect that what we have with your parent and we definitely feel better definitely we don't need medications a mother's touch can heal any of the injuries any of the diseases okay when uh, this kind of a pain relief is it wrong never it is good psychological dimension of pain relief is an important one mind body medicine lot of treatment techniques are targeted on cognitive behavioral therapy you cannot separate pain out of the psychology because pain itself it's a emotion only it's a feeling pain is a feeling for example dr debangshu may not feel the pain whereas i might report that yeah yeah i have pain it depends on we both our both the psychological framework whether i want to tell that i have my pain in front of all of you or not whether i am comfortable with all of you or not that determines how i share that i have pain this is the psychological mechanism which is called as the cognitive affective mechanism and the treatment relief through such psychological mechanisms is scientifically termed as placebo people were given tablets the real tablet for infections okay antibiotic tablets other people were given sugar coated simple tablets vitamin tablets and the second group was told you are receiving the most powerful antibiotic but they gave the vitamin tablet which is sugar coated the second group also had better recovery of infections without taking antibiotics by infections itself i do not know what will happen to covid actually but this is a study which has proved the power of placebo the moment we feel that this will be effective for me that treatment when it is given it will be effective for me or if i feel that dr anuj is the best therapist if he treats me means i will become normal really i become normal it's not just the feeling body itself heals through the mind through our homeostatic processes which are controlled by central nervous system and autonomic nervous system tissues literally heal there are uh, this mind body medicine research which they have showed that the himalayan sages the the swami ji whom ever who is sitting in the uh, extremes of temperature they have done studies that one uh, guru ji the swami ji what he did was one hand the temperature of the hand he raised it his body temperature 
is for example 10 degrees uh, at the environment temperature is 10 degrees so his body temperature was at whatever 35 degrees celsius here this hand he raised the temperature of the right hand to around 85 degrees celsius just by meditation when he is sitting scientifically thermal probes are kept in the hand and he at the same time created the left hand to actually freeze freeze means it went into minus 5 and 10 temperatures and it was going into gangrene because of the uh, frost bright that vascular uh, occlusion both he demonstrated at the same time and he was able to come back into normal function of the hands this study this experiment is cited by john basma jain the expert of biofeedback and he said that the mind control how much you can change the body of course everyone is not a sage everyone is not a swami ji but everyone has a mind so you can always treat the mind okay and that can provide relief in any environment you can even get totally healed also okay so for example dr dashana is uh, practicing reiki it's an energy based healing if the patient believes in the energy based healing they will heal fastest whereas if a subject is telling like i want to check how it works i am having neck pain please do it on me definitely the effect of the reiki therapy won't be there so most importantly it is the belief system that is why we see roadside many of the gurujis many of the uh, layman they are doing various treatments but you will see crowd of people standing lakhs and lakhs and people are ready to meet them anywhere they are always so famous because the belief is generated we are all sitting here how many people are there on the screen dr neha is also here yeah so the five of us are here on the screen we see another 5000 people as a crowd and we see 500 people are being treated everybody is getting improved so when we go in that line you are likely to have an improvement biologically itself because what we see we believe and what we believe we become so this is a very very powerful uh, circuit of pain relief which has to be used judiciously it has to be used honestly i cannot use a psychological uh, channel of pain relief and say it is my technique which produces the relief it's not the technique that produces the relief it is the belief that produces the relief the second one is a parallel connection it's not depending on the technique or the belief of the technique but it's a previous experience with the technique or somebody else took the treatment they got better your own relative or i have taken 3 months before i got better there is a memory of past relief so that is associated with the present experience and if you see these studies the cracking or the popping sound whoever has got the cracking and popping sound has got the maximum relief if the cracking popping sound not there the relief was not much but if you see that uh, what is the basis behind they are telling that there is an alignment problem there is no evidence of telling that there is exactly a spinal subluxation in all the patients but now scientifically they have brought some devices the 3d measurement devices which scans the body and then gives a alignment issues at c23 this is the alignment problem 
C45, T45, L12, sacrum torsion is there, right on right. So they always tell all this. When we enter the data that left side leg length shortening is there, patient is come with shoulder pain, right shoulder, history of previous low back pain. We enter this data, the machine actually gives a 3D scan report of the patient after it scans the spine. Okay. It even scans the whole body also if possible. 3D align, like that, there are machines, the computerized machines that are available. <laughs> Excuse me. So these machines, of course, chiropractic methods. But what I want you to be enlightened is the what is this chiropractic? Okay. So in that aspect, name some techniques of chiropractic. What all techniques you have seen? We have discussed about one which is called as the manipulation. The thrust manipulation which we have discussed now. Other than this, which are the other chiropractic techniques which have come into your acquaintance either through online social media or when you are browsing for other uh, treatment equipments or the techniques. Okay, please put it on the chat. Dr. Neha, Dr. Shahid, should we give chiropractic during pain? Okay. Yes, Dr. Neha. Are you able to unmute? Yes. Yes. Oh, there's an echo. Are you feeling the echo? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can't hear oh, okay. you. Okay. They have put the music for the patients. Okay. Pediatric clinic. Right. So, what I wanted to ask was, what is her query about the chiropractic? Okay. So, what actually she wants to get cleared from her mind? Even Dr. Anuj also. Uh, when you see that, Dr. Debaksha highlighted an important point. So from which you now know that it is not an individualized treatment. It is a protocol-based treatment and non-scientific descriptions, which is not actually proven or validated. Okay. Now the next exposure, what I want you to take you around to a common platform when you put whenever anybody is in online will always get access to, to this is this page and we are going to run that page a bit faster because i have already read it so i'll just summarize and we'll keep moving ahead to see the lighter side of the story. Okay, as I share the screen now. Okay. Just hold on. I will create a data backup. Is the screen visible? The chiropractic? Yes. Am sir. I audible? Ah, okay. Yes. Okay. So we switch to this Wikipedia page of chiropractic. The opening sentence comes with the alternative medicine. And then the third sentence tells esoteric origins and the pseudoscientific ideas. And then the claims are 
vertebral subluxation as the diagnosis, spinal adjustment as a treatment, innate intelligence as a mechanism, risks of chiropractic, vertebral artery dissections, compression fractures. The third point is very interesting. It is death. Original proponent, David Daniel Palmer. Subsequent proponents, his son, B.J. Palmer. Now we come that systematic reviews of controlled clinical studies of treatments used by chiropractors that chiropractic manipulation is effective. A 2011 critical evaluation of 45 systematic reviews found that systematic, uh, spinal manipulation was ineffective in treating any condition. See the extremes of evidence. There is not sufficient data to establish the safety of chiropractic manipulations. However, it is frequently associated with adverse effects. Chiropractic overlaps with other manual therapy professions as osteopathy and physical therapy. And then it goes to the David Daniel Palmer. Uh, so here, the story of Palmer, it moves on like this. I'm not actually going to get through the full page. I'm just sharing the link here on the Zoom chat uh, for people to refer later. But what I want to summarize on that story is 1870, you are a student of metaphysics. 1895, you say that I combined the science with the metaphysics and I am developing a new method of treatment called as chiropractic. What training, what background, nobody in the world knows. And how it all started, I have my office worker. That office worker is deaf. So one day, he was ask, I was asking him, what made you deaf? And he said, uh, I had a fall. Then my upper back got hit on the surface. My upper back. After that, I became deaf. So when he was bending down, he was trying to clear a garbage bin or something. So when he was turning the neck, when I called him, he heard a popping sound. Okay, that office worker. After which I realized that something, why propping sound is coming? Then he said, I am able to hear better. Then I developed the technique of chiropractic manipulation. Because he was bending down and I called him, so he rotated, he got the popping sound. Then I developed the manipulation techniques. This is the first opening statement of David Daniel Palmer. However, this office worker, his name is Robert Hillard. This Robert Hillard's daughter is there. The daughter told, no, 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 this is not the story. Okay? My father was not an office worker at all. They were sitting and talking, of course, the nonverbal language, because he is deaf. My father is deaf. So Palmer was talking. But in between, they cracked the joke. <coughs> Palmer was so excited and he hit him on the back. We usually hit the friends on the back when we are laughing. So he hit on the back, upper back. And during that time, popping sound came. After which my father was able to hear properly. So then 
the thrust manipulation technique was formed. Anyway, whatever the story, my question is, why there is a controversy? Okay. Let it be like he's an office worker bending down, he was called, he rotated and then got the popping sound. Or the, they were friends and they were joking and he hit on the back and then thrust popping sound came and then he became better with his deafness. Whatever it is, right from beginning there has been C for chiropractic and C for controversy. When the further uh, transition goes, the mainstream medicine in America fully protested legal all action they took that chiropractors are quacks. Unfortunately, there is also another hidden story here. I will get back to that Wikipedia so that you are able to see it directly. As we move to this page, <coughs> the controversy. Osteopathy was formed at 1850s. Okay, so two, 20 years later, the chiropractic was formed. People tell that there is a lot of similarity between chiropractors and osteopaths. I'll try to get that point which is here. Okay. Every, see, you might be thinking like I'm just scrolling through the Wikipedia, but what I want to show you is this 21 number is there. Just click that. You will get that. It's a journal reference. Okay. Chiropractic origins, controversies and contributions. Okay. So it's not just that uh, every page in Wikipedia is a, a fake one or a proper improperly edited one. Okay. So. <clears throat> And then it gets back to the vertebral subluxations, the X-ray radiography. Okay. Uh, there is also another co co controversy of uh, the death of Palmer itself. Okay. David Daniel Palmer, how he actually died. Yeah. This is the osteopathy. Chiropractic overlaps with several other forms of manual therapy. Okay. And especially the osteopathy has been highlighted throughout, right from its origins. And if you see that, they have a cure for everything. Okay, so veterinary, uh, so they keep telling that for every treatment, we can definitely use chiropractic. I wanted to show you the page which highlights that. I'm not, okay. Let me go to the page called as History of Chiropractic. Hope you are putting the list of techniques what you are aware. Chiropractic. So Harvey Lillard. Okay, so that's the name. And you see that this is David Daniel Palmer, a very handsome gentleman. And you see that National Institute of Health in US Projected chiropractic as unscientific cult. Okay. 1890s. And then you see that first chiropractic adjustment, the controversy, whether he was bending and then rotating the head. Okay. The daughter was controversy, okay, arguing and all that. And then the early growth. Okay. So here what has happened is. Uh, yeah, osteopathic medicine versus chiropractic medicine. Okay, so you can see that still Andrew Taylor still was the founder of osteopathy. Uh, before we see the content here, let's get back to the Zoom. And uh, the hidden uh, the story, what is in the pages of truth is Andrew Taylor still and chiropractic David Daniel Palmer, both of them met each other and Palmer got a training of osteopathic training from still. But after which he extended his thinking process and developed it as a chiropractic. Which 
farmers is one uh, uh, subsequent generation of proponents are not agreeing that they don't want to agree that we are from osteopathy they all want a separate identity so they are telling that no palmer didn't meet still at all okay but then palmer developed this palmer college of chiropractic which is very famous all around the world nowadays globally so this palmer school of chiropractic the historical pages are there written by david daniel palmer that i got trained in osteopathy so we will see that now with the reference source so i want to bring up the fact that chiropractic and osteopathy are actually maximum overlapping professions and they have been filled with the chiro controversy right from their beginning to now so osteopathic medicine chiropractic medicine yeah okay although palmer initially denied being trained by osteopathic medicine founder at still in the papers held at the palmer college of chiropractic he wrote i took an electro expensive course in electropathy cranial diagnosis hydrotherapy facial diagnosis later i took osteopathy which gave me such a measure of confidence as to almost feel it's unnecessary to seek other sciences for the mastery of curable disease having been assured that the underlying philosophy of chiropractic is the same as that of osteopathy chiropractic is osteopathy gone to the seed and the reference to is a palmer's own uh, pages which have been reproduced the chiropractic theories by robert leach okay so then what has happened is the bj palmer of course his real photo is uh, missing from any of the sources who is the son of david palmer david palmer met with a car accident and then he died he had a premature death okay he was also david palmer was also jailed and uh, arrested because he was a quack and then you see sudden and controversial death 1913 and bj palmer took over the management of chiropractic school himself so everyone blamed the bj palmer the son to be the reason of killing his father okay and then it goes to the visceral disorder stricting of treatment uh american medical association plans to eliminate chiropractic right from 1963 uh so bj palmer is trying to commercialize the chiropractic courses and of late 1978 a year before i was born that is uh, mine was 1979 this is the journal of manipulative and physiological therapeutics dedicated to the chiropractic profession was launched okay and 1981 it came into the medline so that was the journal which promoted the research chiropractic research to be published subsequently many journals were started by chiropractors in order to publish their own articles so this is the overview of what the wikipedia provides on the history of chiropractic what i want to bring up into a kind of a brainstorming is it is part of alternative medicine and the next one it is been protested globally for being controversial not only that the controversy exists right from the story the first spinal adjustment to even between the death of the father by the son and even the mechanisms of relief so chiropractic has always been filled with such scenario have you listed the techniques in the chat 
is anyone in physiotherapy perform chiropractic or it's only for chiropractor specialist nemai imana is from rwanda what conditions can benefit from chiropractic care primarily every patient who believes in chiropractic will get benefited from chiropractic care if i believe that chiropractic will work for me it will work for me irrespective of whatever the condition because the effect is not biological the effect is psychological first next is a central sensitization we all have the habit of if someone is uh, yawning immediately we start yawning okay if somebody does okay immediately we also will be like oh. real yawning we get <coughs> that is central sensitization vomiting also if somebody is puking means we feel like puking okay these are all central sensitization sometimes the beneficial effects of central sensitization is people who pray you see them that they do all the religious rituals they pierce the tongue they pierce from one cheek to the other cheek they don't have the pain they will be smiling they will be dancing around the skin the hook also they will put on the skin the metal hooks and they will pull the chariot where the god statue is kept they will walk on fire that's the common thing which you would have noticed all these practices involve a descending inhibition our brain has the capability to produce this endorphins and encephalins which we are aware in the pain get descending inhibition of pain relief but unfortunately it's not much explored in physical therapy side where in <coughs> even learning people understand about the pain they enhance their knowledge about their pain has led to them improving drastically one such example is i will take you to the glory of pubmed and then scientific journals itself stay tuned the treatment technique is called as pain physiology education so we get to that browser <coughs> so i put pubmed pubmed is a common resource for all the scientific journal articles for medical and biological research so on pubmed i type pain physiology education evidence you can see the first title improves health status web based pain education how much effective clinical perspective education level on the effectiveness of pain fibromyalgia pediatric pain central sensitizations okay low back pain neck pain you will see lot of evidence okay and if i open any kind of random articles even if i want to get into the purely research wise uh, results i can go to the google scholar here so you can see that the full titles systematic literature review even in osteoarthritis pain okay if you open this article from spain and this article is already published in the journal of pain <clears throat> it's a doctoral research okay So you'll get a lot of information. I think it's in Spanish. Ah, uh, this is India, English. Okay. So <coughs> lumbar radiculopathy, 
every condition right and uh, we saw in google itself there were best better research systematic literature review on efficacy of okay i'm just searching for that article systematic review on meta analysis pain neurophysiology education on musculoskeletal pain you see that it's a big research and they only has found that pne being safe having small to moderate effects on pain and on disability as well as psychological distress at post intervention after they analyzed 18 rcts okay rcts means randomized control trials which are considered to be the best level of evidence for testing a treatment on patients okay so this has central mechanisms so you can have a pain relief depending on education okay so if somebody you are doing a learning a new language or somebody explains to you what is the pain why the body has pain what are all the mechanisms of pain in simple language that itself has caused a relief of pain so if i tell you that or i am coming to you as a patient dr debangshu tells me your neck pain is because of dr debangshu shows like this okay your neck pain is because this joint is out of place like this so i am going to hold it and i am going to correct it lie down and then i do and then i get a cracking sound after which of course opposite side also then again cracking sound definitely patient will think that patient came with pain you created a new thing that explanation that it's because of this joints being out of place okay so it's got locked i am going to open that locked neck so now that sound is coming after that i say yes you got the sound it is got opened okay yeah dr hamad yasir from pakistan he is asking why should we do both the sides as a physical therapist you know that one side is enough okay but the chiropractors do both the sides as i highlighted in the beginning of the session okay maybe he joined just now so you are reinforcing an education to a patient that your neck pain is because of a yeah, joint dysfunction or a lock and i am going to open it you will get a sound and after that i do this you get a sound automatically what as a patient i will feel oh yes it got opened so again i will have a relief of pain most importantly if you are a patient will you take chiropractic manipulation put it yes or no upper cervical spine chiropractic manipulation will you take it if you are a patient put it in the chat considering the factor that in the corner of the risk factor it is written death obviously because none of us want to die even if you say one in million will die still will feel i may be that one okay so then what is is happening with this courses the chiropractic courses people are becoming model they are doing the thrust manipulation on each other okay unfortunately here we have a crowd who have not done the courses 
But in courses, sometimes what happens is the instructors tell, today is first day, you won't get the cracking sound. Okay? When you keep on practicing, because there's only two days, you cannot become expert. So cracking sound, when I am doing, it is coming now. When you are doing, it will not come. In your practice, when you are routinely practicing, cracking sound will come. Okay? And the student always is happy that, okay, I learned from an expert. And definitely I can get it in the future. I want to also see the certifications provided by chiropractic courses. Certifications provided by dry needling courses. Why dry needling I am bringing here? These two have same type of hazards. The serious adverse events. Whenever a medication or a therapy is introduced into the field, you are supposed to do a research on adverse effects because we don't want to harm the patient. So, adverse drug events, ADE, or serious adverse events. Unfortunately, if you see, they have very high rates of adverse events, but still being distributed worldwide and most importantly in India. In India, there was a question by Dr. Hamad that should physical therapists use I think it was another uh, therapist who asked that question, okay? Or we need a specialist chiropractic training. Okay? Yeah, Nemi, Nemi uh, Mana. Okay? Uh, you are supposed to ask the question on the screen if you are asking for a certificate later. Okay? If you don't uh, ask on the screen, Nemi Mana, you can unmute. I don't know why you are not at unmuting. Dr. Ram Keval Vishwakarma. Jean Pieri Nemeimana. You're not unmuting. Okay. <clears throat> yes. Dr. Johar is telling, and I have heard cracks, pops are not mandatory for treating. It is just a placebo. Because Normal subjects like us also will get the crack and the pop. Okay. We will feel relaxed. Like my hands are relaxed only. My hands. But if I do this or do this, okay. After that, I will feel relaxed only. Okay. Whether the hands are more relaxed than it was before. Before also it was relaxed, but now I feel it is more relaxed. Simply because something is done. So we'll always feel that effect because of what is done now. Okay. So patients are likely to feel relaxed. Another secret. When, you, when I demonstrated, you saw that I am not getting any cracking or popping sounds. Okay. Because my joints are normal. Normal in the sense... They are not hypermobile. They are not having nitrogen gas bubbles. Whenever you give a distraction to the joint, if it is only synovial fluid, okay, it will not get distracted. It will be stable. <clears throat> Little bit only it will get distracted. After that, it will not allow because the viscosity is there. The negative pressure within the joint is there. It will not allow. If the air, air bubbles are there, nitrogen gas bubbles are there inside the joint, then only you will get a better distraction after which the gas bubbles will merge into a larger bubble and then they create a positive pressure because the air is a positive pressure inside the joint, the synovial fluid. And further distraction will break that large nitrogen gas bubble. That is the loud cracking or the popping sound which we are listening. And the big bubble, where it goes? It becomes small, small bubbles and it goes to the corner. Again, after three days, all the bubbles will come. It will affect the joint movement. 
again cracking has done another popping sound has to be done if you really following up these patients those who are physically active young individuals they take a chiropractic manipulation three months they will not get the pain back but after three months they want to take again chiropractic another thing is whenever head to toe anybody is given any treatment leave about chiropractic any treatment head to toe it is given i hope i am clearing myself twice because even if you take massage if somebody does a head to toe massage you will feel heavenly and after that once in 3 months you want to take massage okay just because i feel good so great so you definitely will go there so that scenario the dependency develops and the second factor is people who are sedentary those who are deconditioned not young or athletic these sedentary people three days once they want a cracking sound our routine habitual uh, people who are not aware of uh, what is this cracking sound what are its side effects that it causes joint hypermobility it causes premature joint degeneration this cracking okay frequent cracking cracking many of the younger people the high school kids or the college students any day morning when you wake up they'll do this okay they have to get the popping sound then only their day begins sometimes you might have also done remember you are pushing your body beyond what is normal and it will all come to the stress fracture where the ligament and the capsule is attached to the bone that the bony attachment getting osteophytes stress fracture or joint itself going for injuries inside intraarticular or periarticular injuries of the joint capsular strains because clicking not coming not coming not coming if i am pulling means what will happen if i am not coming not coming <laughs> okay if i keep on doing that means what will happen so that is the picture there dr hamad wants to add on yes unmute Uh, sir, uh, 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 when the muscle of uh, uh, the uh, muscles become stiff, can we apply the movement or not? Because most of the patient, firstly, uh, we uh, the start of our session, there will be muscular tightness. So first, we will relieve the muscular tightness and then apply the thrust, or uh, both we apply at the same time. Kindly, please. Uh, it's a common uh, clinical reason that people don't come only with joint problems. Okay, they come with muscle dysfunctions. So, how without treating the muscles, you can apply a manipulation technique? But nowadays, you see chiropractors using. the massage gun okay for people who want to know what is the massage gun let's get to the screen go to chrome okay so just put massage gun chiropractic images so you get various guns like this one which is an adjuster gun or corrector gun okay so that is this okay so this, this is very uh, it's for alignment correction skeletal but if you see this this is for soft tissue corrections don't worry about the price being 15000 it's available for 1500 also okay uh so what is this tools which is uh, looking like this it's called as the activator gun 
or you call it as adjustor gun. Okay. So you can use that to correct the, the spinal uh, alignment directly on the spine. Okay. This is the activator instrument adjustor tool. Okay. So various nomenclature differences. Fascia gun is a softer one. This is the softer one. Okay. So you have this probes which are much more gentle and uh, uh, basically, if you want to know the difference means whenever you press the fascia gun onto the par, the vibrations will reduce and it will stop. Okay. And it is rhythmic vibrations. But the adjuster gun, you set the force level, how much it has to give the force and you keep it on the spine, press it, then initiate the trigger so that it provides the correction. That is a different purpose. I had demonstrated uh, both of them in many of my courses. But what I would advise now is for you to differentiate that soft tissue treatments in chiropractic is also possible. Uh, just hold on, Dashna, are you available? Okay, you're off the screen. I want people to highlight chiro manual therapy. Dr. Debangshu, can you unmute? What have you understood about chiro manual therapy? Because you have recently completed the courses of chiro manual therapy from AOMPT. Chiro manual therapy is the Add on. Yes. Garamana uh, therapy is the perfect use of the uh, manipulation or uh, um, chiropractic approach in perfect way, perfect joint, perfect alignment, position, and perfect correctment, correction. And patient wise approach and biomechanical, pathomechanical point of view, correction should be. Achieve because in we cannot hear you, sir. Because it is pathomical for first, as so he assess the pathomechanical point of view and what uh, what is the uh, problem, basis, and Actual correction is possible because it is yeah, yeah the voice continuity is breaking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so you highlighted that it is perfect. I want to know what way it is perfect and. Uh, Uh, I hope I shared some of the clips in the group also and earlier uh, frequently for the past one month. We have been sharing content on Cairo manual therapy. Uh, so, Dr. Dashna, yes? Yes, sir. I think uh, uh, very importantly, I would like to um, uh, like, I mean, talk about this because uh, chiropractors, I mean, we've already talked for last uh, 45 minutes, one hour we've been hearing uh, to what sir has said. Um, definitely, even I was interested to understand what is chiropractors, but I was never in for chiropractors because I always had these questions in my mind that uh, how can just one uh, technique uh, relief, uh, get a pain relief to the patient? Okay. Uh, it's like it's more of a placebo effect because uh, we know that uh, we, we've been seeing videos of people doing chiropractors, but I would say that chiropractors has been in our culture since many years. Like I remember that in everybody's house, I'm sure everybody would agree to this, that a simple like if a person is having a backache in the house, uh, you make the kids stand on the back and then you hear the sound. Okay. And you feel start feeling good. So what is it actually? It's chiropractors. Right, it's a type of a technique. So, uh, but but I always have felt this that uh, repeatedly uh, doing this technique, 
uh, definitely won't it lead to instabilities because uh, as sir was mentioning that if a person is very active uh, it's a different story physically active doing exercises okay having this chiropractic adjustments uh, every 3 months is okay but then what about people who actually come with pain who have so many other dysfunctions and then we say that one adjustment gives a complete recovery i totally don't agree to this uh, because uh, for me it's always been like uh, there's not going to be one reason for pain it's not only the joint stiffness like sometime back uh, dr hamid asked like wh how sh why should we uh, should we um, treat the muscles before that before giving chiropractic uh, i would say as a patient centered approach when we see a patient and treat a patient uh, we definitely see uh, which is the dysfunctions primary we treat that dysfunction and then go for the secondary dysfunctions so if the person is coming with spasm i will definitely not give chiropractic but i'll treat the spasm first and then give chiropractic but to just to get you that differentiation of uh, chiropractic and chiro manual therapy what we've been recently learning from bas one month is like you should have a very very sound knowledge about the biomechanics firstly and the pathomechanics what we learned from sir uh, for the last one month we've had spine uh, chiro manual uh, uh, therapy uh, with the adjuster uh, with the tool as well as with the gun we have seen but uh, it's like uh, uh, we will have, we'll see that chiropractors it's like you uh, they just do the uh, adjustments without understanding uh, what is the actual dysfunction so if if right side there's a dysfunction they do right side adjustment or like as sir was mentioning you know the problem is in the knee you do the you do the uh, adjustment in the spines but is it really required which segment is uh, really uh, needed you know which segment you will actually uh, treat with chiropractic so that is the core um, uh, thing what we learn from chiro manual therapy where sir integrated all the techniques together first is the basis of biomechanics and pathomechanics assessment is something very very important so if it goes to spine we need to understand what is the dysfunction which segment is the dysfunction and which positions and how we'll be giving the um, uh, technique so that's a difference it's not like blindly we are just following okay the patient is coming with pain and then uh, we just know a technique and we are performing it it's not that but in depth knowledge of biomechanics pathomechanics assessment i would say is something very very important what we learned in chiro manual therapy and then we give the adjustment with the tool so it's not just like you have the tool in your hand and you give the adjustments uh, you need to understand what force you need to understand uh, what are the muscle dysfunctions there you need to understand even the nerve dysfunctions there so it's like uh, in fact not only articular myofascial neural but even the central mechanisms need to be considered uh, we have seen uh, like you know so treating uh, i mean uh, showing us demonstrations of techniques where uh, we even use uh, the therabands while giving the chiropractor uh, the tool adjustments with the tool so i'm trying to tell you is it's not just uh, producing those sounds okay not those popping sounds but it's more beyond that and that's why i was more interested in understanding chiro manual therapy because that is within our scope of practice and i feel that's a improvisation of chiropractic for me i i never wanted to do because uh, uh, people do say you know like oh why don't you learn chiropractic you know being a physiotherapist why don't you do chiropractic but then as i said that uh, that doesn't satisfy my uh, what we say my soul because uh, i always feel like am i doing justice to the patient by just giving a uh, one adjustment listening to the popping sound person is feeling better but i know that it's going to be temporary because if i'm not going to um, uh, assess or treat the surrounding structures totally 
For example, if I'm not going to give motor retraining for a backache patient, if I'm not going to give certain uh, motor retraining exercises for stability exercises, or whatever is needed, for example, myofascial techniques, if you have spasm, you give reciprocal inhibition. If it is tightness, you give post isometric relaxation. So this is just examples what I'm sharing with you people. I think only chiropractic is incomplete treatment. And more than that, I would say it's like misguiding. You know, let's not, uh, let's have that inner thing that we treat a patient as a whole, right? A uh, holistic treatment is always necessary. So chiromanual therapy, uh, definitely, uh, I found that thing, you know, which I was looking for. Okay, how can I use chiropractic in an improvised manner with physical therapy or with our physical therapy uh, treatments? So that's the difference, you know. So understanding the pathomechanics and giving the treatments, uh, giving the adjustments, but you have to be very, very thorough. Like, you know, we don't blindly uh, give the adjustments. Uh, I'm sure like whoever is with me, all the participants who have taken up all the CAMAT and uh, the courses, uh, we had one in uh, Chennai recently. So uh, we understand that it's not just, so it's not just given demonstrations of, you know, giving manipulations or like, you know, high velocity thrust. It's, it's, it's the manipulations or the adjustments was done by the tool. But before that, it's like a lot of mechanics behind understanding what is the dysfunction and whether the individual really needs that. So that, that uh, what do you say, the decision making, the clinical reasoning for it and the decision making uh, as per our uh, physical therapy uh, a perspective is something very important what we learned in chiro manual therapy so and uh, integrating everything so that was something very very important and i think that is the improvisation for chiropractic and we all as physical therapists obviously we should uh, you know take this up like okay i'm not going to do only adjustments but i'm going to see more beyond that you know i'm not going to create a temporary effect but if the because i don't want my patient to come again and again to me right? Just for the sake of uh, creating those popping sounds. No, I don't want my patient to come for that, right? And uh, of course not, it should not be a placebo effect also, right? So being in our uh, physical therapy uh, limits and then doing the adjustments, I think that's what chiromanual therapy has given. Yes, Dr. So, um, sir is there. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes, Dashna. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> you said it right that uh, it's not just muscle tightness what uh, a question came. There may be a myofascial adhesion. So that means fascia with the muscle, there is adhesion. Because of that adhesion, this muscle which is below is not flexible. Ideally, this muscle is supposed to be flexible and moving around. Fascia is uh, moving around in a different direction. When adhesion comes, this is not able to contract effectively. Strength issues are also there. And there is mobility issues also there. The muscle will not be free to move. So flexibility will be reduced. We think that it is tightness of the muscle. It's no, it's because of the fascia adhesions. Some patients have tight muscles. They come with you, come to you like this with pain. And if you're trying to elongate the muscle, they'll get increase in pain. They'll never allow you to palpate and they will never allow you to stretch. That is not tightness. It is spasm. So various issues like how Dashna was highlighting motor control or different types of trigger points. Myofascial chains. Of course, osteopathy also speaks about myofascial chains. Muscle in one region related to the another muscle's mobility. You can release the muscle in the neck or you release the plantar fascia. You can have the relief of neck pain. 
So one tree, one region you treat, another tree, another region you are getting the relief. Myofascial chain, myokinetics. You activate a muscle that is far away, and you get a better activation that is again far away in another muscle. So that means I activate my tongue, and my quadriceps activation becomes better. So myokinetics is another extended method. All are not explored in chiropractic. But if you see what I am about to share, we'll give another perspective of what exactly is within the world of chiropractic. Because nowadays, the Western chiropractors and the Indian chiropractors have their difference. That is why when Dr. Debanshu said that he is watching the video, I was quick to point out that all were Indian videos, okay? Because the Western chiropractors, they do little bit properly. Means they do a bit of examination, the bit of uh, combined treatment. They don't use isolatedly thrust manipulation alone, okay? So let's see some of that when we come to the screen sharing. As Madam also highlighted about what we presently have uh, as an upcoming course, which starts in the next 24 hours from now, it's the Cairo Manual Therapy Practitioner course that's coming up at Bangalore, available online and offline, both. We are focusing on some set of techniques. But these techniques will be administered functionally. Drop techniques, activator techniques, adjustment techniques, manipulation techniques. Active release is for the soft tissue. Voice trap manipulation is among the miscellaneous techniques which can be used uh, for the upper cervical spine, voice trap. Middle and lower is optional. Okay. So this is the flyer of that upcoming course, the Cairo 23 Cairo Manual Therapy Practitioner at Bangalore. I want you to see the net, the Google images on each of this. For example, active release technique for chiropractic. You apply pressure on the muscle. At the same time, the joint is moved either actively or passively. So that means you give pressure on the trigger point and at the same time, the upper extremity is moved. Okay? Or lower extremity is moved. Okay? That is active release technique. The next one is, of course, wise strap manipulation. You can see the positioning of the subject and uh, everyone giving in different uh, dimension, different types of wise straps commercially that is available. And all the people, patients are happily smiling after the manipulation. Okay. Right. You also would have heard of a diversified chiropractic technique. Okay. This is also globally that is famous, which is nothing but a combined technique. You use the thrust manipulation, you use adjustments, which are gentle techniques, you use activator method, or you use the drop methods all in combination and you try to treat the whole body. That is diversified chiropractic techniques. This is the activator tool or the instrument and also the gun in the second row. You can see the guns right and left. Okay. Uh, so all these are for alignment corrections as you can see that how they are using technically. But in our course, we have used it, of course, clinically. In addition to that, I want to get your focus to also kinesiological taping. Because what we are doing, kinesiological taping itself, was launched by Kenzo Case, who is a chiropractor. But now we are using the kinesio tapes as physical therapist only. We are using biomechanical principles and we are applying the tape. 
the Graston IASTM Instrument Assisted Soft Tissue Mobilization is also basically a chiropractic method. So understand that technique does not make you a chiropractor. This is a drop piece or the boards. These are also used for applying the chiropractic techniques. Uh, so this is the cervical piece. Okay, which is here. Of course, you can see the numbers, 1,23,000 Indian rupees. So various uh, commercially distributed uh, tools, of course. This is chi chiropractic tables where the same drop method can be used at any level. Cervical, upper back, lower back, pelvis, or the lower extremity. Of course, these tables are also minimum 2.5 lakhs. So that is the picture here. This is the drop table. Specifically, you get all the results. There are different types of drop tables for chiropractic, which uh, basically is the Thompson technique. Okay, so Thompson drop table techniques. Okay. Right, so we get back to the Zoom. Yes. So that gives an overview of what are all this that in and what way a chiro manual therapy will be different. A simple picture. Instead of giving both the sides, we will be giving the thrust more localized. So that means blocking the lower level and then applying the force on the higher level to specifically localize the cracking sound or the pop if at all it happens to the dysfunction facet. What I'm trying to tell is you have got a stiff joint. For example, this joint is stiff. C2, 3, 4. So C4, 5 facet. Okay, so here, where I have kept my index is stiff. If you are not localizing C5 and 4, C5 has to be blocked. And then C4 has to be moved. Then only that joint will be opened. If you do generally as a thrust, the normal joints will open. Above also, below also. Because the one which is stiff will never open first. Normal joints will be fully open. When they are stretched to their limits, then only the stiff joint will open. So a grass thrust technique is not going to get a popping sound from the dysfunction joint. It will bring a popping sound from the other levels. Patient will feel better because of the sound. But unfortunately, the dysfunction will remain untreated. So there are two solutions to this. C4-5 facet lock. Either you position the spine into an extension or a flexion so that the force is localized only to C4-5. Or you block at least C3 and 6. C3 and C6. You stabilize and then you give the thrust. So, so that the thrust will be on C4-5. So this is what is a precision which is possible only by a thorough understanding of pathomechanics. In AOMPT, every course has an extensive pathomechanics for which I can proudly say, I repeat the word proud, pride. P for pathomechanics, P for pride. In the whole world, whole world, any osteopath, any chiropractor, any physical therapist, whole world, bring them on the screen. Let them talk about the pathomechanics of a facet joint or intervertebral disc. And the AYMPT also we will speak. You can judge whether India is the best or not. 
this is the obligation that we have and also as a physical therapist is better or not compared to other professions for pathomechanics open debate we are ready for an open challenge with anybody in the world if aoipt is proven to be lesser knowledge in pathomechanics or we are telling wrong information in pathomechanics we will stop providing the courses forever but if other people are giving lesser they should also stop training because people are not teaching the pathomechanics and they are teaching only the techniques making you technicians if you know the pathomechanics you will be a clinician where you can develop your own techniques because the magic of the creativity of developing new techniques is pathomechanics the language by which the patient's body speaks to your hand is the pathomechanics you cannot treat the disorder because physician is there the disease will be treated by the physician you are not treating the dysfunction you are treating the patient you are not treating the joint you are not treating the spine you are treating the patient so muscle problem also you have to treat joint problem also you have to treat leave it that even neural problem even vascular problem also you have to treat visceral problem also you can treat so never undervalue yourself and get into a technical domain under alternative medicine trying to identify yourself as chiropractor rather do the course chiro manual therapy of our own academy in india the aompt academy of orthopedic manual physical therapists right dashna Sir, can you yes, please add on some few points? I will just receive one package and come back. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yes, rightly said. So, pathomechanics is something uh, core. Um, I bet on this that I've been doing courses since three and a half years uh, with AOMPT. Uh, but a very very sound. None of the courses. Uh, you take the videos and you see that none of the course uh, will be completed without anatomy. without pathomechanics biomechanics and uh, it's like uh, if you don't understand the root cause problem how can you treat how can you assess right and uh, believe me even i i've been practicing for 25 years now but things change when you understand and when you learn uh, something in a very uh, systematic manner uh, whoever is sitting here with me today will surely agree that uh, everything is not taught in our bpt curriculum right when we graduate or even after years of experience somewhere we feel that lack of even if we are experienced in treating we feel that lack of uh, uh, what do we say knowledge of maybe anatomy maybe the biomechanics maybe the pathomechanics somewhere you know even if we know a condition if a patient comes to us we know the condition but then we seriously know what is going on inside and what are we supposed to treat even if we know what is going on inside what is it that primarily we will treat so this is what we learn in aompt uh right all the conditions right from head to toe any of the conditions uh it gives you that confidence there you know like okay you understand this you understand pathomechanics then you understand you have a list of techniques manual therapy techniques for articular whether be it mulligans maitland's celiacs okay and then you have myofascial techniques right again a list of techniques there you have facial muscular release myofascial release uh, you have uh, muscle energy techniques right so motor retraining for that matter and then you have uh, no, neural techniques right so which uh, addresses the neural structures so uh, we have basically um, what we say all the neurodynamic uh, positions we have we have we know how to we have the sliders tensioners but a uh, judiciously using these techniques is something very important that decision making of what i am going to give to my patient at that moment is something very important instead of just blindly giving swd or ift and then then just prescribing some exercises uh, without that proper knowledge 
So that's how I've come to know. I treat my patients with the assessment now. So when I'm assessing, if I feel there's a spasm, I will give reciprocal inhibition. So that is how we link, you know. And of course, uh, not forgetting that uh, when I say patient-centered approach, it comes to not only the somatic, right? But it also goes further down to visceral, visceral and craniosacral. So all these techniques, you know, visceral uh, techniques also we have learned. We had courses about uh, uh, visceral uh, manipulations also, where uh, ligaments which are surrounded, uh, the visceral are surrounded by ligaments definitely, and how these can have influence on the somatic structures, right? So somatic dysfunctions caused by the viscera or visceral dysfunctions caused by the somatic structure. So this relationship is something very important to understand uh, because like you know that you treat a patient who's just come with a problem, a back pain, whatever, for that matter. And then after certain sittings, still the pain is there. Then you start going deep down, you know, okay, what can be the problem? Is there viscera affected? Is the pain coming from the viscera? right? Then we need to treat the viscera also. For that matter, we had cranio-osteomanual therapy also. So, uh, craniosacral therapy <clears throat> is totally different. But when we talk about cranio-osteomanual therapy, it again comes back to understanding how uh, one structure is affecting the other, right? So, again, there we have uh, somatic structures affecting the cranium or the visceral structures affecting the cranium or vice versa and you evaluate and then you understand the pathomechanics of it and then you treat so it's it's like uh it's in depth uh, this is uh once you uh, enroll in for these courses once you understand uh, and then slowly start putting into your practice it definitely gives good results to the patients so if if you are a thinker like that you know if you're a physical therapist who thinks that uh I just want, don't want to treat my patient you know, with half knowledge, I would say. I was also like this a few years ago, right? But my confidence of treating my patients has definitely improved. It's because I understood what I'm doing properly. Right? I learn techniques. We all learn techniques. We have workshops. We go to workshops also, definitely, right? But then we become technique-centered. We, we learn the technique and then we find patients for the technique. Oh, I've learned this technique. I've learned, uh, I've learned myofascial release. I will do myofascial release on everyone. You know, whoever I feel, okay, come on, let me do myofascial release everywhere. But then I think that doesn't work. You need to understand like, what is the right thing for that patient at that moment when you are seeing the patient. That matters a must. And that is what we learn from your MPD. So it's like, we are blessed. We are blessed to be a part of UMPT. And I really thank Sir for this, that he's given a, a perfect, what we said, guidance, a perfect path for us uh, as physical therapists. Like, don't treat haywire. Don't assess haywire. Understand anatomy. Anatomy also, if I talk about, I mean, it's going to go on and on if I keep on talking like this. But then let me get this. Anatomy, we have learned in our uh, uh, graduate level that it's like, what the MBBS student learns, right? But seriously, do we need that? That much in depth? No. As a practitioner, clinician, I have never felt that we need that kind of anatomy, but we have learned clinical anatomy from sir. So you understand like how it is different from the normal anatomy what we learn, right? How as a physical therapist, what is important? What muscles, what joints? You know, what are the structures? Uh, what are the neural structures, ligaments, everything? Like, but from a physical therapy perspective, from or from a, a dysfunction, if we see, or from any condition, if we see, we will see the patient from uh, a different perspective when it comes to anatomy. So that is how it makes it easier. Surely, it definitely makes us, uh, like, you know, uh, when it is easy, you automatically get that confidence. So that's the uh, glory of knowledge. Uh, what we have got from AOMPT from Sir. And uh, I'm sure whoever is sitting here and listening to me, uh, like you, you will always get that thing, you know, oh, Madam has learned something different. Let me also go and try. In this session also, all free webinars also for that matter, if you attend, 
as i yeah last session also i mentioned this that i don't attend it for certificates never because any any session whichever i attend i feel that even if i've learned something here that free webinar will also give me a point which is going to enhance my knowledge so that is how i look at it it's not certificates of course certificates is important no doubt about it but uh, i can bet on this that every time a sir sir will definitely share something uh, which is uh, surely going to enhance your assessment skills enhance your anatomy skills assessment or, or uh, enhance your uh, a clinical reasoning for that matter you know uh, i was not very confident about maitland's mulligan's till now still it's like okay okay but i know now you know now i know specifically where i have to use maitland's where i have to use mulligan's right i don't go by the diagnosis i go by what i assess in my patient i go by my findings and then i treat so that's how you know i've got that confidence now and uh, yeah thank you so much sir for that and uh, thank you everyone for listening to me so patiently yes sir right this part i want to show uh, different one so everyone can stay mute right so the cairo content 33 the bangalore uh, is a smaller flyer okay, for the certified cairo manual therapy practitioner course happening here in bangalore available online and offline the second flyer is the of course the comprehensive flyer together with the organizers the physio 365 and of course uh, the speakers okay so that's the banner here Uh, so we have what i am most interested to show the bigger one i am not aware whether it uh, gets covered on the screen okay so this showing like this from the yeah so something is covered here and then i rotate the banner okay so the cairo con 2023 bangalore certified cairo manual therapy practitioner we are enhancing our quality not only in our knowledge but also in our certifications you can uh, see that the type of certificate that we provide okay and uh, i had shared this of course in the group um, a while before i'll again share it so that people will know the features of how an aompt certificate appears and if i show more closer you can clearly see the content what is written okay the signatures with the registration number any certified practitioner certificate is valid only if there is an expiry date you are supposed to renew the certification every 10 years okay you, you can't be a dry needling practitioner certificate without a validity cannot be lifetime validity okay so and the photograph is important for your identity and the credential evaluation information and also the cairo manual therapy what exactly has in its contents the drop method activator method the miscellaneous techniques you know manipulation and adjustments everything described so our certificate is not just something which has your name and then it tells the education the course is only for knowledge and it does not entitle the practitioner to practice we tell that you can independently evaluate and treat the patients using this method as per the laws of the land so remember academies every certification we have an obligation that we be within the legal limits of the profession as a physical therapist cairo manual therapy comes under physical therapy you will not face any legal suits in the future if you are identified as a cairo manual therapist rather than being a chiropractic technique you are telling chiropractor two days you took training chiropractic you are putting yourself as chiropractor 
it's not legally permitted at all so please be aware before people get sued and they lose the money and also strengthen your clinical domain of your practice for example there are techniques like myofascial release and muscle energy techniques they are all osteopathic techniques only but doing the training we should not become osteopath for example yes spouses between spouses yes, husband is there wife is there wife does the cooking correct because technically the wife is in charge of cooking husband does the job if the wife does the job will she become husband no she will stay as wife only technique does not change you husband does the cooking he will not become the wife because he is cooking understood so don't lose your identity for the sake of a technique take the technique improvise it with our principles use it within our profession physical therapy like what we did for myofascial release muscle energy k taping even dry needling because acupuncture is a different profession but dry needling we have taken it and it is inside the physical therapy now uk the charter society of physiotherapists has given dry needling under the physical therapy in curriculum itself so take the technique i am not against those techniques but don't be technical be clinical because you are part of modern medicine and you are a physical therapist who is the future leader of healthcare the whole world knows the value of physical therapy please understand to upgrade yourself with proper courses from proper academies get yourself certified that is valid globally and the knowledge that will be valid even 50 years later that is learning from aompt means for you i as the chief instructor have the obligation to provide the best knowledge the truth of knowledge for its glory as its loyal servant i always identify myself as a servant of knowledge who is doing my duty if your destiny has chosen you that you will transform in your life aompt is ready to walk with you all the way along in order to build a better future and a better world god bless you all i appreciate the active participation of all of you i really enjoyed this evening interacting with you all exploring the facts the clarifying the myths behind the chiropractic in its evolution philosophy principles and techniques so that now the world is that chiro manual therapy patient centered functional pathomechanically applied physical therapy approach is always available and aompt is always ready to conduct the courses anywhere in the world please coordinate with us arrange the courses we are ready to travel and we'll conduct the best training programs which you would have ever had in your life good luck to you all yes dashna so we are ready to close the session yes sir yes of course you know we will be missing ritu ma'am uh, okay. because she is having a relatives at home okay okay mm -hmm. uh, she is uh, at just to few, few minutes before the webinar started madam uh, she got the phone call that relatives are arriving in bunch okay okay so there are relatives one side and another side and there are relatives from outside india also so oh, all are there okay. it's a big uh, evening for her she is uh, she will be in a different world now okay
so mm. and oh, okay. uh, he was eager mm. to attend and i told her that better when you don't have the glasses or just now you had your eye consultation and things yes it's only interactive webinar you can always watch the video later you can also yeah. listen when you are speaking absolutely not a practical demonstration okay so mm. this ma'am would have had longer more uh, inputs to add on <laughs> yes uh, you both have been the greatest driving forces for developing newer and newer patient centric mm-hmm. techniques when one of the registrant in bangalore dr ravana siddapa natikar who is of course uh, is also um, we are felicitating him with a clinical excellence award okay in the second chiro contour 23 okay okay ravana siddapa natikar okay mm-hmm. that's nice so he is a clinician who is also a holistic uh, healer he is explored yeah. into yoga he is explored into mind body medicine he is attending this session of our aompt a physical therapy workshop after years of his practice he is entering into physiotherapy oh wow and he said only one thing your explanation of patient centered techniques Mm. i wanted to know that and i want to experience that okay on first hand so i am attending this offline chiro manual therapy practitioner because i have heard a lot about chiropractic and i have seen my friends doing chiropractic and all that but i want to see what is this chiro manual therapy and i really i am fascinated with that patient centered approach what you are explaining in all the webinars mm-hmm. so aypt is the world's leader in patient centered treatment absolutely sir that definitely possible only because of darshna and also ritu ma'am so we have a it's like a triangle okay so you are the base <laughs> i can just be as an apex and i can keep on growing but the stability should be there from both of you when you are balanced <laughs> so that the academy keeps on developing <laughs> new and newer approaches for benefit of patients okay so god bless you and uh, keep giving your inputs on patients what you have used and so that we develop better and better techniques right yes sir. yes thank you so much sir both radhakrishna and ritu ma'am session stop the youtube yes. streaming